These in the background here are the 20 students that are enrolled in this year's honors program. This is uh, perhaps not the most flattering picture on the face of the earth, but every time I look at it, it, it makes me happy. We took several outdoor pictures at the end of, uh, of um, uh, fall quarter, and this was this was the fun one. All right, so just tell you a little bit about what you're going to be signing up for if you do uh, get into the honors practicum. It's a really an adventure that's uh, different from anything that you've probably done before in your UCSD careers. Um, it's a long haul where you're going to be asked to use almost everything that you have learned over the past three years and then stop. Um, it's uh, you're signing up for the experience of working in a team that's not necessarily of your own choosing. Um, I, I assign people to teams by the topics they're interested in rather than by who they want to necessarily work with. Um, but, you know, what you'll also get out of this, I hope, too, is, is lifetime friendships and a whole background of lifetime learning. Um, you'll hopefully get the degree with honors, you'll get new skills, you'll get confidence, and I think a real sense of accomplishment. I, I push people really hard, but I think in the end, what they come away with is a lot of empowerment that they have really learned a lot and, and have a great set of skills when they come out of it. So um, the big picture is a class meets twice weekly, um, and it's going to be winter and spring quarters. Uh, Dina told you about the, the credit hours. Um, I don't do a lot of lecturing anymore. If anything, I just go ahead and tape the stuff, uh, make videos of the stuff that I want you to, to learn. And I really try to maximize the, the learn by doing. There are a few um, overall group sessions and lectures, but otherwise I try to use the class time for, for uh, teamwork and, and group work. And the course is actually built around doing something very practical, which is, which is a community-based evaluation. Um, just tell you something about myself, where I came from, I, did, I went to Wesleyan University, that's a picture of me in the upper left-hand corner when I was your age. Um, I went to Wesleyan University and did the honors program back there in the dark ages, actually before I think most of your parents were even born. And I was in the third graduating class uh, from the UCSD Medical School when only, there was only the basic science building and, and, and the library. I'm trained as a pediatrician at Los Angeles Children's Hospital, and I worked as a pediatrician, but then I did a master's in public health at Berkeley and ended up finding my life work in epidemiology at the Centers for Disease Control, where I stayed for 20 years. Um, I ran the field epidemiology training program in Italy for 12 years. I was head of policy and evidence in the health sector of UNICEF for a couple of years. Then I started doing uh, working for USAID and doing domestic consulting. I taught at San Diego State and UCSD in the doctoral program. And I was actually one of the people that helped set up the BSPH from the very beginning. So I've been around for a long time. Um, I've been running the um, honors program now for six years. And you know, occasionally I also teach an outbreak course. And one of my big pleasures is I, I am a volunteer at the San Diego Zoo. And I'm most recently having great fun working the zoo cams. And if you ever need to kind of zen out, this is great. So so this was this weekend's polar bears taking a, you know, <laughs> lying there in the mud and the one-year-old orangutan torturing uh, her, his uh, nine-year-old sister. Okay. Research experience. I've had lots of that too. I've got over 200 publications. Um, I've never had an NIH grant, so I differ very much from the faculty. And that's why I'm a professor of practice instead of a regular professor. Um, but I've done applied research and evaluation in many different fields. I've done it in over 20 different countries. And um, a lot of the work that I've done is kind of based on the types of projects that you'll be doing that uh, don't have a whole lot of money usually with them, but have a lot of goodwill and energy good brains, namely yours, and uh, and uh, like I said, minimal to no budgets. So what you should know about me, um, when I was in, in Italy, um, what my students called me was caterpillar, which is their name for a bulldozer, which kind of means that I just push forward and I don't give up easily. I'm very hard headed. Um, when I, uh, I set up a field site out in Botswana, even back at the very beginning of the HIV epidemic, and, and when I left, my staff gave me this batik that they had made that has a combination of butterflies and porcupines, and I think it rather nicely reflects my personality. I've got both aspects of, you know, being basically kind, but I can be very prickly and, <laughs> and yeah, very prickly. Let's just leave it at that. I'm also a, a perfectionist, you know, on the perfectionist scale, and I think my poor students can talk about what this so what this means out in the real world. Um, and in fact, this year, 
Um, I asked the students to to uh, design a badge that uh, everyone will get to to put on the, on their on their stoles at graduation. Uh, this was designed by Bernadine Bernardino, who is here, and it basically says BSPH Honors Practicum, uh, the Queen of Perfection. So, just letting you know that I have very high standards, and, and I will push you very very hard. Um, so, of course, background, like I say, the students work in teams to evaluate newer existing programs or policies, and I'm the one that kind of chooses the broad topic. Um, we then consult various stakeholders and say, you know, what would you like to know about this? Are you interested? And so on. And, and so basically, I kind of pick the general topic, and then I go seek stakeholders, and then we work with them to find out exactly what their needs are. Um, this is a far more active role um, than in most university experiences. A lot of times, if you're taking a, a 199, for example, it's somebody else's project that you are um, coming into and working on. Once we decide these projects, you are going to be basically designing a study and, and, and carrying it out. Um, some teams sometimes have faculty members, depending mentors, depending on the topic. Uh, we did not do this that this year, but we may again next year. But basically, I would say that it kind of takes it up several notches above most 199s um, or even internships and, and definitely more so than the capstone. Um, I take only 20 students. Most of the capstone sections have 30 to 35. And so just right there, there's uh, there's more attention um, and more time about it. Not only, men, not only that, but it's, it's uh, 12 hours instead of eight. So... Each team does an evaluation from A to Z, um, and we usually um, can fit in two. I'm going to have to see with this new schedule how that's going to work out. But they're basically um, based around CDC's well-tested program evaluation approach, where there's a, an emphasis on really doing the useful and the practical and coming up with um, practical recommendations. Um, and also, it's providing a, a service. Um, this year, we did a, an evaluation of basic needs um, among our senior capstone students, and so we were looking at food insecurity, housing insecurity, access to health services, and safety on campus, and yesterday we had the great opportunity of briefing the campus-wide basic needs committee, including the, the vice chancellor uh, for student life and the head of the hub and so on and so forth. And the recommendations that our students came up with and a couple of the folks that did this briefing yesterday are here. Um, are going to hopefully get turned into some reality and some changes in, in policy here. Um, we try to do both qualitative and quantitative research. I want to introduce you to the broad spectrum of what's out there. And basically, you do all the background work to set up an evaluation, which includes how you figure out what your objectives are. I have you do logic models, which actually is a wonderful thing to someday put on your on your on your uh, resume, and to plan out your analysis. Then we collect the data, we analyze it, and then we disseminate the findings through a multitude of channels, both scientific and lay channels, and and with our stakeholders. Another big uh, thing that we do over the course of the year is a career portfolio, and I'll explain a little bit more about that. Um, and, you know, there's some online videos and readings, like I say. It's not a heavy reading course. I, I think it's more into, into doing. I do do quizzes, and they're really hard and mean quizzes, um, but I'm trying to maximize class time for teamwork. And again, this is self-motivated learning that you really are going to go into, into, into a greater depth. The grading? You know, almost everybody gets an A, but you have to work really hard to get it. And most of the grade, about 60, 70 percent, is usually based on your team projects and effort, which puts a real premium on working well with your team and being being productive. And, you know, it's not that just somebody submits something and I say, OK, this is a B. Here's your B. Um, because we're dealing with stakeholders and we have to maintain our standards and give them a really nice project, you keep doing it and doing it and doing it until you have a really nice, nice project. So um, what I do is I allow resubmissions of projects. I usually, you know, chuck off a couple of points as, as it's going along. But um, basically, I really want to come up with, with good products and have you learn, but have you also work really hard to put together a, a good initial project. I do allow some extra credit um, over, over the course of the year um, to, to bring up people's grades. So what I'm trying to do with this course too is really take you out of your, your usual comfort zone. You know, it's like, 
a lot of the courses you take, they just want you to memorize and then, you know, regurgitate it back on, on, on paper. Um, but if those are your, your skills, you're going to find that you're going to have to go way beyond that. They're not a, a much help here. I do the quizzes, but the, the quizzes are all open book and are on the materials we cover. And they're usually not factual. They're do an exercise or, or apply this. So where I try to take things is really up what's called Bloom's Taxonomy of Education, which is applying, analyzing, and evaluating, and 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 creating. And this is this is what ultimately is is going to to matter with you with your success. So this takes it out of the realm of certainly um, the uh, many of the undergraduate courses you take, and and takes you up to to a really high level. The way I kind of see this class, I was, as I mentioned, I was at CDC for a, a long time, and I trained. Oh, 40 or 50 EIS officers, epidemic intelligence service officers, and then did the same thing in, in Italy too. And even though you're undergraduates, I like to treat you like my trainees and just really kind of expect you to learn and, and, and kind of push you to, to really apply and, and take things one step further than you've ever been. So we're really heading for the peak here. Okay. So um, taking you out of your comfort zone, um, your success is based not only on your initiative, but your ability to work with a team. And what I have folks do is, is develop a, a team contract and do some initial team meetings with icebreakers. Um, but I also ask you to largely resolve any internal issues you have. I mean, sometimes when things come to an impossible point, I will get involved. But I think that part of learning how to work together well is, is figuring out how you resolve your own own team issues internally and have you revisit your your contract. This is uh, at the zoo. This is the, the dog and the cheetah, uh, definitely out of their comfort zone. Um, you know, there's a lot of ambiguities and unexpected challenges. And I think this is something too. It's not a lot of times there's not a right answer and a wrong answer. But, you know, it's kind of also that's the way the real world works. And it's part of the learning process. And I, I advise teams, but, you know, you're going to have to make a lot of independent decisions about how you're going to do things and, and, and what you're going to do um, in, in the course. So um, I do not spoon feed. You know, this is kind of like I throw you out there and it's kind of like when do you stop spoon feeding uh, the day you start this uh, the, this practicum. This is very much um, I expect a lot of independence uh, out of you. So, OK, good. Um, so what do you learn to do? Well, you know, the first thing I have people do is put together an evaluation protocol. I think it's a useful exercise thinking through the whole process of, you know, what the background is, what the problem is, uh, coming up with the um, objectives and developing the, your methodology and so on. I also have you do a logic model, which a lot of the students says one of the mo most valuable skills that they gain um, and is often useful to them as they go to apply for jobs when they when they graduate. I have you develop a plan to analyze your data beforehand so that you don't just start doing cross tables of color of eyes by color of hair and you have an organized plan to at least look at your initial data. Uh, my students are total experts and then some in, in Qualtrics. They now run circles around me in their ability to put together their do Qualtrics surveys. And because we do qualitative work too, we also learn how to develop interview guides. Um, collect and analyze uh, quantitative data. Um, what I use is an old CDC software that's called EpiInfo. Um, I use this because it's easy to teach and we've got it now worked out so that it's not seamless about being able to use it even if you have a Mac, but at least it functions and um, it provides the exact type of analysis you need to do epidemiology. And then we also learn how to use uh, various software to do um, uh, qualitative data coding. Um, you learn to interpret data, you know, what does all this all mean um, to develop a dissemination plan? How are you going to get the information out and who needs it and what do they need it for? And how are you going to, which channels are you going to use to get it out? I also teach you how to make readable slides and, and visuals. And um, so, yeah, these are from, from a couple of years ago. Um, we also learn how to make amazing posters that people actually look at and come over and talk to you about. Uh, we present at the San Diego Epi Exchange, the Public Health Research Day, and then also at the Capstone um, graduation final. Here's our beautiful posters that this year's class made. The one up in the upper left-hand corner was on housing insecurity. The one below that was on uh, about safety on campus. 
Uh, the one on the upper right is about food insecurity, and the one on the on the uh, lower right is about our uh, access to health services. And the one in the middle was an evaluation of, uh, of how people got into the BSPH and what they're hoping to do afterwards. And um, we won two poster prizes, the only two prizes that they gave to to undergraduates this year for 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 two of these posters. So good. Um, you also do learn how to do professional stakeholder reports and, and, and oral presentations. Um, I think this is an important skill to have as well. These are, again, some old examples from a uh, survey several years ago on night safety on campus. And then we do, we work with the Del Mar school system uh, doing some evaluations during COVID. And it's got, as you can see, quite a, a different style. But it's kind of also learning how to talk to different audiences, which is, which is an important skill to have at public health. Um, the other thing that you do, and uh, I'm just so impressed by my students this year, uh, is to learn how to do infographics and also put together some various social media things. So um, these are two of the infographics on, on either side here. This one's on the housing and security. This one's on security on campus. And then a couple of the students, this is a, from a, a TikTok, and then another group of students made a, a great thing on, on safety and security on campus. And then we also had several Instagram things that I couldn't figure out how to photograph and get on this page, but you know all about that stuff. So anyway, good. So um, the other thing is with the career portfolios, what I'm really trying to get you to do is think about your future. You know, it's like, a lot of people just kind of go through and well, my mom's always told me I needed to be a doctor or whatever. And they're they're pushed really to do things that sometimes, you know, they haven't entirely thought them through. So I, I make folks go through a very serious exercise about what you want to do and why you want to do it, and what the prospects are for the future and talk to people who are already working in the field. And then I also make you do um, mock interviews on, on big interview. So yeah. Um, so things to think about before you apply for this program is your time and availability. You know, this is a, the students can tell you this, but it's a really time consuming course. And I try to turn over most of the class time so that the teams can work, but you're going to need to be meeting with your teams outside of class. So this is not something where I would push your schedule to the absolute max. Um, most students work. I realize that that's the reality of going to UCSD, which is such an expensive school, and it's so hard to meet the co cost of food and housing, as we found out in our surveys. But it's hard to do this program and, say, work 20 hours a week. Um, you know, 10 hours a week probably works very nicely, but really taking much more than that is, is an issue. Um, you know, I think if you are planning on doing something like um, – going to medical school or into a PhD research thing, you may actually want to work um, in somebody's lab or on a project where you can have a publication out of this. This is a very practical approach, and I think a lot of it is applicable to research, but if what you're looking for is kind of a more academic experience likely to result in a publication, um, uh, you know, you may be better off doing 199. Uh, the other thing is whether you want to do your own project, which doesn't happen in my own course. Um, you know, if you do want to have your own ideas of what you would like to do, I, I suggest either that you try to find somebody that will support you for doing 199 or take the regular capstone where students often work in small groups, but they are student initiated projects rather than Nancy Binkin and stakeholder initiated projects. So the other thing to think about is, is how you feel about working in teams. Something that came out of our BSPH survey is how much uh, students often don't like working in, in teams, that it's one of the big challenges of being a, a public health major. And again, I think this is an extraordinarily important skill to gain because you will spend the rest of your life if you go into public health working in, in teams. So good. Uh, what I'm looking for with the applications and, and interviews, um, I'd like to see that you want to do something in public health, or at least if you are planning on going into um, a um, uh, becoming a healthcare practitioner, you know, like a nurse, a nurse practitioner, a physician, or something that you can give me a good justification on why you want to do an, an honors practicum. Um, and it's really hard if what you want to be is a dermatologist or an intensive care neonatal specialist or something like that, or if you want to be the next uh, biotech startup CEO. Um, it's not that I will not uh, consider taking you into the program, but I would like to find out how you would plan on, on using your, your public health skills. 
Um, good grades are, are obviously important. Um, previous team experiences, and one of the questions on the um, application, as well as something I often ask about a previous team experience, and they can be positive and negative. I think we all learn from, from our negative experiences, as well as uh, we learn what, what does work with teams. Um, writing skills, uh, it's, I really am looking for people that know how to write and to, and to write well, because, um, you know, it just makes your whole life a lot easier. I can't teach you from the beginning how to write. So uh, anyway, enthusiasm, uh, time, like I said, not heavy, it's not compatible with a super heavy course load or work. And also, I, I do want to say that I love having um, transfer students and, and first gen students, and I think we have a, a, a higher than normal rate of, of, of both in, in the in the program here. But obviously, I am happy to consider consider everybody in there. But if you're a transfer student, don't be afraid of of applying to to this program. Um, the other thing is when you put together your ap application, there's an old expression that uh, goes back a long time. I didn't just fall off the turnip truck. So, you know, I've got a fairly high BS meter. So when you put together your application, you know, keep that in mind and, and, and please be honest about it. And please don't have chat GP, <laughs> chat GP, whatever you use, <laughs> do it for you. And, um, you know, I'd like to also see who you are and what your writing skills really are. So. Um, this is me, I'm one of those old coots out there giving advice, but the, the people who can really tell you something about this program are, are the current students. And so I think we'll go ahead and turn it over to them. It's the same picture as before. This is at the uh, San Diego at the Exchange uh, poster session there where we made quite a show. And if any of you went to the Public Health Research Day, um, we had quite a big interest in, in, in the posters. And uh, this is our classroom in the earlier days when we were all wearing masks and in this kind of claustrophobic little classroom. Um, but yeah, so this is kind of how the students spend most of their time though, is clustered around each other, working together on, on projects in, in the class. Okay, so that is all I had to say. So, okay, and stop sharing. Let's see, up share. Okay, there we go. So Dina? Okay, thank you. So now um, we have several honors practicum students from um, this year's cohort. So I'm gonna ask if one by one you can say your name and whether you're a, a, a transfer student to UC San Diego or, or you entered as a freshman. And then um, let's go with one thing about the honors practicum that even after applying and watching last year's video that you were maybe surprised, whether it's a pleasant surprise or an unpleasant surprise. And, um, you know, as I've, I've mentioned before, um, and Dr. Bingham will probably bow out, we, we, we encourage the honors practicum students to be completely 100% honest. That's what we're, we're looking for with you all. So I will work on pinning each of you, but I'm gonna go in the order of the slides that I can see. So uh, Terrence, if you're willing to, to go first. Hi, can everybody hear me? Okay, cool. So my name is Terrence. Um, I'm a transfer student from the local community college. And I would say the most, one of the most surprising thing is that um, Dr. Bacon does push you really hard. Like I want to emphasize that. And I know that next year, you guys are going to only have like two quarters for this class. So I can only imagine how much more condensed and rigorous this course is going to be. Um, so our class, we have a lot of packages and each package is, you know, separated like two, three, um, weeks apart, like do apart. And so it's kind of up to you and your team, like, you know, if you want to like front load it or like back load it. Um, so there's a lot of independence, you know, and how do you want to like approach this, you know, the projects and the packages. Um, but like I said, Dr. Pinkin does push you really hard. Whenever you submit like a package, you might submit thinking, okay, I think I got an A on this or like I'm going to get 100% on this. 
but you will get feedback um, and sometimes it could be a, be a little discouraging but I do want to say that um, this class is very rewarding and if I had the chance to you know go back in time and I would definitely apply again without doubt like in a heartbeat so Alexia do you want to add on Thank you. And then um, let's do, um, are you going by Madison or Maddie? Um, my name is Madison, but I go by Maddie, so either's fine. I think Alexia is raising her hand, though. Sorry, we're going to do questions at the after they've all introduced themselves, and then um, questions can be raising hands or putting the message in the chat, and I will read them out loud. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's part of the practicum, so I just didn't know if she was trying to add on to something Terrence said. But oh, um, did I miss? I'm sorry. Who was raising their hand? Alexia. Hi. So sorry, I didn't see you there. I'll add you. Okay. It's okay. I thought we could just bounce off of each honors practicum student that way. I didn't know you had a. If you a prefer set, to do um, popcorn, we can do popcorn too. That would be fine. That's okay. Um, I'll shortly introduce myself and then Maddie can go after me. But um, my name is Alexia. I've been here all four years. So I started um, attending UCSD in 2019 before the COVID pandemic. So I kind of feel like a transfer because two years was online and then now two years um, back in person. But um, honors practicum has definitely been a whirlwind of a public health uh, class I've ever taken. Um, most of my classes were online, so transitioning back into person and having such a rigorous course was definitely um, had a shock factor to it. I actually do really like working in teams. Um, I'm a very social person. I'm very involved on campus, um, and I really tried to my last couple of uh, quarters here on campus. So uh, in terms of juggling like your academics and social life, uh, definitely the honors practicum takes a big chunk of that away. You will be pulling all-nighters. You will be in constant communication with your teammates. So um, get some social skills and learn how to talk about things, especially when they get uncomfortable. That's not a suggestion, that is a need. Um, in terms of like the actual assignments, so I worked on the food insecurity project. And honestly, I'm really glad I got that um, topic. I'm really interested in it. I'm very involved. It's always really cool to see updates around campus to see your change being made or like your posts being um, offered. So we recently had an Instagram post go out about CalFresh allotments. They were cut because COVID funding was gone. Um, and I think they got some 60 something applications for forms for emergency um, assistance. So there is an impact um, you can make in the honors practicum and afterwards. Um, I got a lot of great resources through the honors practicum. I get to talk to people that are really involved on campus. Um, I have opportunities after I graduate because of this uh, program. I heard about job opportunities. You know, it can set you up for a really good pathway. And in terms of professional standpoint, um, doing the career portfolios has definitely prepared me more for like the outside world. Um, I definitely got more of an idea what I wanna do in terms of grad school and things like that. And then again, talking to your colleagues is kind of relieving because you feel like you don't need to know everything. Um, and they're there to guide you and talk about things on a student level, talking to Dr. Bacon and things on like a resume level. Um, and yeah, you get some great connections. So I do recommend it. I don't know how this two quarter system will be um, in terms of the honors practicum, but uh, I feel like if you're very interested in having like a very rigorous course, your final year or your junior year, you should do the honors practicum. Um, that's all I have to say. And if Maddie, you wanna go. Uh, thanks, Lexia. So uh, my name is Maddie. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I originally came into the practicum thinking, uh, besides my love of public health, that I wanted to become a PA. So my concentration is in the medicine sciences. After this year long course, though, my view has definitely shifted, which I was shocked by. Um, and now I think that I'm going to pursue an MPH. I'm going to take a year off. So who knows, things might change, but I really enjoyed this class. And I think that the thing that surprised me the most besides the career path change is the amount of time that it really does take that you have to put into this class to be able to be successful, not just for yourself, I want to emphasize, but also for your teammates. Um, if you think that you can handle it, you just need to maybe think a little bit ahead and make sure that if you're going to take on all these commitments, you also need to make sure you're there for your teammates, because it's really like 
it can be really unfair to like leave the workload up to your teammates because you've overscheduled yourself. So I think that my biggest piece of advice would just be seriously consider what extracurriculars and work you need to do before you join the practicum so that you aren't stuck kind of treading water and barely surviving. Uh, I think with that, I'm gonna pass it to Hannah. All right. Hi guys, I'm Hannah. Um, I came in to UCSD as a first year and I'm actually a third year graduating early. And so I saw someone in the chat ask like how many hours per week does this program take? I don't think any of us could really answer and give you like an exact number. But honestly, I think like any hour that I have free or available, I spend working usually on this class. Like it takes up all of your time. And that's like not an exaggeration at all. Like um, we work on it like through spring break, through Thanksgiving break, even winter break, we're like thinking ahead of what to do. So it definitely takes up like a lot of time because like Dr. Began says, she doesn't like lecture in class. Um, so like you're watching those lectures on your own time. You're relearning everything you learn from like biostats and epi um you're like spending hours at home trying to like perfect your code like it's a lot of time so make sure you're like prepared for that and um also what else oh and then also like I know like last year Dr. Began everyone said like she's very like harsh and critical and I didn't know how much to that extent but definitely it, like this was class is not for the week like you have to be prepared to take all of those comments in and how to like uh, how to take how to take it and then better yourself but definitely I think it's worth it and I have like learned so much from this and I feel like I'm definitely prepared to now work in the public health field um so I'll pass it on to Fernando Hello, everyone. My name is Fernando Hernandez. I am a third year um, UCSC student here majoring in public health. Um, I came here um, right after high school. Um, and I found that the most surprising thing about the practicum um, was how hands-on Dr. Binken was. Um, I feel like normally in our other classes, like the professors are generally like pretty distant with the students. They'll give their lecture and then not really um, stick around much. But Dr. Binken really cares about her students and is really like hands-on with everyone. Um, I would emphasize, as everyone's mentioned, that you work a lot of hours. Um, I personally have spent like a lot of nights working um, late just to work even later the next night, um, working on comments that Dr. Binken had left us. Um, but I definitely think that it's doable if you, you have the right mindset and you're determined to put in the work. And with that being said, I'll pass it on to Bernadine. Hi everyone, my name is Bernadine. So I'm a fourth year right now and I came into UCSD as a first year. So just to kind of reiterate, um, basically everyone said the gist of what being an honors practicum student is, but I do wanna say, and when people ask me how the practicum is, it, if like they're a public health student, um, thinking about what capstone to pick or if they're in the regular capstone right now, like as all seniors should um, take is that I tell them that we do like we have opportunities that other students can't like Dr. Binkin mentioned that we had a poster session at Epi Exchange. We had a poster session at the you know the, the graduate fair and stuff like that. We're able to use systems like Epi Info like Qualtrics. Yes, PHRD, there you go. Thank you, Maddie. These are some opportunities that other students can. And because of the work that we put in and the connections that Dr. B has, just because of her prestigious experience and just upbringing and such like that, she is able to provide that to us and we are able to make good connections from that as well. So I feel like this is a great way to basically improve your professional experience and basically wrap up your senior year because I don't think I would ever have this experience if I wasn't in the honors practicum. Uh, last year for sure during my fall quarter where I felt like I had to relearn everything once again like in biostats. This is a class where you're actually using all of the things that you learn from your prerequisites and applying it. Dr. B isn't going to tell you like how to calculate something or what something means. You have to go ahead and take the time out of your day to kind of relearn about that. And it is doable, but I would only suggest do it if you're motivated to do so just because it is 
um, gonna be shortened to two quarters instead. So I would just imagine how much more extensive the transitioning is, but definitely it is doable. Make sure to communicate with your teammates and it is a team effort. If your team gets your work done during class and such like that, you're, um, you're gonna have a free day. So maximize your time wisely. And I know that I was sick a lot for like sessions like due to COVID or like having the flu. That doesn't mean you're excused from class. Like I had to make up learning how to do stuff for my um, professor, like Dr. Binkin outside of like class hours. So definitely COVID or being sick is not an excuse. You find the time to make up for it, but definitely it's all been worth it because of where I am today. And so I'll pass it on to Felicity. Hello, my name is Felicity. I'm a fourth year um, student and I joined UCSD as a freshman. Um, I think for me, everyone already touched on like great points in terms of um, things that like surprised them. I think what surprised me was um, how like when you'd get a package or assignment, yes, there are like instructions, but it's just very much like figure it out yourself. And you have to take that initiative to figure out what's your team, ask questions, look on the internet, whatever you need to do to get that package done. So in a sense, yeah, it, that just like surprised me a lot. And also how um, Dr. Binkin looks through your assignments with like a fine tooth comb, like every sentence, every word, it's like looked over and there might be like some feedback for it. And I'd say regarding like really busy schedule, um, I think it is really, I think it is possible. I feel like this year I really jam packed my schedule, which I don't recommend because it can definitely impact like your group and you don't want to, you know, leave your team members behind to do all the work. So I would just say like really check in with yourself and think about like what your year is going to look like. Um, but I definitely think it's doable. It's just, you might have to push yourself really hard, <laughs> but yeah, that's all I have to add.